Bridges are pathways to places that would otherwise be inaccessible. They allow us to pass by even the most unsuitable terrain. And bridges, they typically lead us to somewhere, anywhere. But not all bridges do this. Some bridges, like this one right here, are bridges to nowhere. This is the story of the Hillendale Bridge and the housing development that almost was. In a small valley formed by glaciers cutting into the earth is a seemingly ancient artifact made of concrete and rebar. The first people to own land around Hillendale were M. Stewart and L. Phillips in the year 1852. In October of 1897, Anne Boyce Othrate would purchase the land. She was the wife of Joseph Othwaite, one of the richest men in Cleveland, who would pass away a few years later in 1902. A log cabin would be constructed near the ravine, and later a mansion would be built. Interestingly, a 1911 newspaper article mentions several gardens and farms separated from the main mansion by the ravine. It goes on to mention the concrete bridge that connects the mansion to the farms across the ravine. Although we don't have an exact date on when the bridge was constructed, this means it was built by at least the year 1911. In October of 1909, the property would be sold to Burton Tremaine. In 1925, the property would be sold to a developer named O'Donnell. Shortly after this, he would announce plans to construct the subdivision. A newspaper on April 26th of the same year would announce all the high-class homes that would be built there. In 1928, the Ream Sanatorium would move into the mansion at Hillendale. It served as a home for people who were disabled and were unable to take care of themselves. In 1929, another advertisement was published in the paper, asking for people to come and buy lots for the homes that had yet to begin construction in the subdivision. Shortly after this ad was posted, the Great Depression would hit. Few people would be able to afford the homes that were going to be constructed in the subdivision, and soon the project would become defunct until the year 1935. The Forcapa Realty Corporation would take over the project. They announced the construction of 10 new low-cost houses in the planned subdivision. Sometime around 1940, the Ream Sanatorium would be renamed to the Maple Ridge Hall Nursing Home. By the end of World War II, no developer wanted to finish the project, so the bridge remained connecting to nothing. Still, it's a very impressive piece of engineering. I mean, look at this arch right here. It's very beautiful. You can see the artistic intent of the architect, but it also helps support the bridge. It's quite an incredible and intuitive design. But before we continue this story, how about we take a look at the bridge and the surrounding area? Right here is the top of the bridge. You can see these really cool concrete guardrails on the side. And then here's the best part of the bridge underneath where you can see all of these beautiful, beautiful arches. It is a really nice day out. A somewhat comfortable 70 degrees. Look at that. That's some really cool graffiti right there. Look at these arches. They are beautiful. And of course you have the little maintenance shacks built into the pillar there. Oh, and there's this little river right here. 
You can see some foundations, a cart. But if we walk over here, there's a little bridge, a little concrete bridge over the creek. Or crick, as some people would call it. Though when people call it that, I get a crick in my neck. Look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, I'm coming up the other side now. We'll get a good look at what, what it looks like from the other side and then go hunt down for some foundations that are supposedly over here. Careful with that. If you pull too hard, the whole bridge might collapse. <laughs> All right, let's follow down this road, see if we can find anything else. Yo, look at that. What a beautiful deer. Wow. Hey, can you hold the camera on it? I want to get some pictures. Right on the other side of the bridge. There's another one. Wow. That's incredible. Well, we didn't find any foundations, but we did find some deer, so that was pretty cool. We're going to head back now. The Maple Ridge Nursing Home that used to be the Reem Sanatorium would close down in the early 2000s. As for the log cabin, it would be sold for $108,000 in 1979. The log cabin is still standing today, however the same cannot be said for the former nursing home, once named the Tremaine Manor. It was demolished in 2008 and now there is nothing left but a small dirt patch and some overgrowth. The bridge certainly saw some use as it was most likely not built for the subdivision but constructed much earlier. However, over the last few decades, it hasn't really been used as a bridge, but rather a spot for parties. Many people who used to live there remark online about having Halloween parties in the 70s and 80s and hanging out around the bridge as a teenager. The so-called bridge to nowhere is decaying and falling apart, however, it still stands despite being over a century old. Nearby is a small park, and on the other side of the ravine are several hiking trails. Although it's unclear how much longer the bridge may stand, it has certainly had a big impact on the people of Euclid and Hillendale, and it will never be. Or God. Comfort my soul. I could not find my place to be. So walk now. It's long as
By the end of World War II, no developer wanted to finish the project. So this bridge remained with nowhere far to connect to. Still, it's quite the impressive feat of engineering. I mean, look at these arches. They're absolutely beautifully constructed and they support the bridge. You can really see the artistic con what a intent. Intent, that's what I meant to say. All right, let's try it one more time.